This is something that does not just fall in your lap. You actually have to proactively go out there and look for it. It's often pretty time consuming and there's a lot of competition to get it. But if you don't have this, by the time you graduate, you are setting yourself up to have a really, really tough time getting your first data analytics job. So what is it? You're about to find out. I'm Bria, Associate of the Society of Actuaries and Actuarial Career Coach. Right now, we are working on a study of entry-level data analytics jobs for math students. So that means that I have set out to find, track, and analyze 200 entry-level analytical jobs that are marked as entry-level on LinkedIn. And this will allow me to find trends in what employers are really looking for in these data analytical jobs, particularly for fresh grads. Now, I don't have all the results yet, but what I'm seeing across the board is that entry level does not really mean entry level. It means not only do you need a whole bunch of qualifications, but you also often need one year of related experience. Do you see how that's contradictory? They are asking you to have one to two years of experience when you've been in school for years. Unfortunately, we can't change the requirements that they're asking for. So what can you do to gain that experience while you're in college? And what kind of experience really even qualifies as related? Well, here's what has worked for me and many other data wizards that I've worked with. Thought I'd cut in here really quick to give a quick background on myself in case you don't already know. I went to school to become an actuary and an actuary is a risk analyst. And these types of people are a bit different than your typical analyst because they are using data in order to predict uncertain events that might happen in the future. So this could be things like forest fires, hurricanes, business losses, stock market crashes. Basically actuaries assess and manage risk. There are three methods that I'm going to share with you today. And the first is really going to allow you to set up a foundation that's going to help you with the following two. The second is a long-term strategy that you can start implementing right away. And the third is actually my favorite because it might be the most creative and most effective way of gaining relevant experience. First off, I volunteered my time in the summer way back when I was in high school. So, you may not be able to do that as a college student that you know has to actually pay some bills, but at the time I was able to, so I took advantage of it. In this volunteer position, I was working in the accounting department of a very small business where I was responsible for doing quite a bit of data entry, some bookkeeping tasks, account payable, accounts receivable. And even though this wasn't what I actually ultimately wanted to get into, it still really set me up for success because I gained a lot of experience that was relevant to the data analytical job, the actuarial job that I eventually wanted. Now, I did this for two months straight, full days, but not everyone has the time to do that. So what you could do is volunteer your time one to two hours per week, and then you'll gradually build up experience over time. A quick Google search finds that there are several websites out there where you can find remote volunteer positions. So if you look on those websites for positions that involve data entry, data analytics, maybe bookkeeping, or any other analytical responsibilities, you're gonna be in good shape for when you graduate. Remember how earlier I said that the first method was really setting up a foundation for yourself. And the second method was a longer term strategy that you could start implementing right away. Well, a few months after I was done my bookkeeping volunteer experience, I knew that more experience was going to be better. So I used my network to start getting more experience. I was in the fortunate situation to have my dad start up a welding business. So the opportunity to do bookkeeping and admin work for his business kind of fell into my lap, but that doesn't happen for everybody. You never know who may be able to connect you with an opportunity where you will be able to gain experience and improve your skills in data analytics. So throughout college, you should constantly be working on growing and nurturing your network. You should aim to be connected with everyone you know on LinkedIn and constantly or continually be providing updates to them on what you've been doing towards your career progress. It's also important for you to be helping others in your network. It's not all about you. It is also about supporting others so that you can have a mutually beneficial relationship. There's also an easy networking thing that you can do that most people actually just don't do at all. And if they do think about it, then they still feel pretty uncomfortable doing it, so they don't. And that is to ask. Ask your network if they would be able to connect you with people that they know that might be able to help you get the type of opportunity that you're looking for. 
or maybe they directly work in a company already that might be able to offer you this opportunity. It never hurts to ask, but if you don't, then you're really leaving it up to your own devices and there'll be such fewer opportunities available to you. Your network is filled with hundreds of people. I think there was a study done a while ago where it said that most people know about 600 people. And it really does come down to different things like the extracurricular activities that you're involved in, the schooling that you do, and your job, all that sort of stuff. But if you know 600 people, then surely you should be able to connect with at least 100 of them on LinkedIn. And I encourage you to do that. So if you have a good reputation with these people, then some of them will actually be willing to recommend you to someone else that is in a hiring position or recommend you for a job that they know about. Your network can be a lifeline for you. I currently am an actuarial career coach for up and coming actuaries that want help getting their first entry level job and gaining all the qualifications that they need. And so many times I have seen that their network is a key way of getting into the industry. There are even many times I've actually seen positions made for them because of the strong network connections that they have. So do not discount this. Now let's talk about internships. Don't worry, I am getting to that creative part that I told you about that may just get you the best results. But first, internships. These are an obvious way to get related experience, but most people think that they have to get an internship in the exact field of work that they eventually want to get into. That is not the case. If you want to get into a data analytical job, then you could look for internships in accounting, bookkeeping, finance, insurance, all of these would give you great experience that you could still put on your resume and they'd still count as related experience. Unfortunately, there aren't enough internships for every student to be able to get one, so they can be fairly competitive, but this opens up more opportunities for you because you can get into internships in other fields rather than just the type of job you're trying to go for. Although I wanted to be an actuary, my first co-op or internship was in the IT department of an insurance company. And in this position, I was responsible for keeping a database of company assets up to date. So I was responsible for tracking who had each asset and which branch it was at, when the leases were up, and all other sorts of important information that the company would need to know in the event that they needed to track a certain asset down. Being able to track all this data and learn to manage a database was really valuable experience in getting future jobs that were more related to exactly what I wanted to get into, which was the actuarial career. So you might be wondering, what's that one thing I can do that's very creative and possibly the most effective way of gaining relevant experience? Well, that is to create your own opportunities. Freelancing basically means that you are a contractor for businesses that need help in a certain area but don't have the expertise on hand to be able to complete the projects that they need done. So there are sites like Upwork, for example, that connect these companies or businesses that need work done with people that actually have the special expertise to do them. You could go on these freelancing sites to find work that's relevant to the type of career that you want to get into, which is most likely going to be a data analytical role. There are tons of data related opportunities on these types of websites. So if you do this for six months, maybe 12 months, maybe even longer while you are in school, you're naturally going to build up a very diverse experience and skill set with different types of businesses and different types of data. And it's going to give you so much exposure that employers are going to love. On that same note, you may actually be able to create and host your own events. Imagine creating a data competition for students at your school, or maybe going to an organization and offering to do a study for them, presenting them with that idea that maybe a certain study, research study could help them. I've already started on the study of entry level analytical jobs that I'm doing, but if someone had reached out to me previously and made this suggestion and asked if they could do it, I would highly consider that as an option. And there are other companies out there that will do the same thing. You just have to be creative and think about what they might need, what they might want research done on that you could do for them. These types of ideas not only get you the experience, but they also demonstrate your willingness to be proactive, to take initiative, and to use leadership skills that so many other students are probably not going to have experience using. For most students, the internship route is the most preferred way to get this experience. So what if I told you that I could help you get 50 or more people helping you look for an internship on your behalf? I could also help you to discover a very important qualification that almost any internship employer is going to love 
And also, I could make you aware of a common mistake that interns often make on their resume. All that is in this video right here, so go watch that next.